Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we head into our final segment of the day where we're going to be touching on some different rumors surrounding the Los Angeles Lakers. Yesterday, they introduced J.J. Redick officially as their next head coach, um, had the press conference for him and everything. I only got to see bits and pieces of it, but definitely in case anybody was curious and hasn't seen it yes he is officially moving on from podcasting so we will no longer be getting the mind the game between him and lebron james which um is uh, expected for sure but uh definitely was a good piece of content while it lasted and also the fact that he said that he and LeBron James had not talked about the idea of him being the head coach until 30 minutes after he was uh, offered the position, which I think that we can all agree is a load of um, a load of BS to some degree that they had to have had some conversations there. But at the same time, you know, no big deal, obviously he's saying whatever for the media but also the fact he was very aggressive in some moments of this press conference in terms of you know the idea of facing the pressure and how is he going to handle that all those lines he dropped a couple f-bombs along the way there so was i wouldn't say contentious because he wasn't mad at anybody directly but was definitely making a statement of being hard-nosed maybe and I think it's going to be a really interesting era to see how this plays out. And again, I think that he very much can be a good head coach in the league. But this is a very difficult position to pick up. And especially if it's your first ever head coaching gig, basically anywhere outside of youth basketball. So, you know, going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But that being said, I feel like especially with J.J. Redick now, as the head coach in place LeBron James is going to be their next top priority is making sure that he comes back and he is happy to be back next season where he is uh, planning to decline his player option and at least enter free agency now this was for the most part always expected at one point during the middle of the season Brian Windhorst of ESPN was talking about the fact that it's a 50 million dollar contract for next year anyways so you know a lot of you know good money there for him to pick up on but at the same time when you're LeBron James I feel like especially at this point in his career he is probably going to I think he's going to continue to play for at least another three four years but I would imagine he would like to get some money guaranteed for the next couple years and have a little bit more stability. He just can't necessarily, I mean, he could if he wanted to, and it would probably go well for him, but his old strategy when he was coming up in the league, or specifically once he was uh, headed out of Cleveland for the first time, the fact that he would sign a lot of one-year deals, have a lot of player options involved to the point where he could hit the open market just about any time he would like to. I think that it, for him, at this point, age 39, that's not necessarily his top priority. It's just making sure that he gets guaranteed money for his family You know, moving forward here. And it's probably going to be a three-year deal. It sounds like that is what he is interested in, and the Lakers are reportedly committed to making sure that they get him on this three-year max contract. Ultimately, he cannot. I don't think you can say that it's the wrong move for the Lakers by any means in terms of the fact that it gives you a couple things. A chance at you know being a playoff team and raises your floor a ton, and it gives you relevance, which is kind of what the Lakers thrive off of, especially after basically the entirety of the 2010s decade. Once uh, Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles, it was pretty much over until LeBron came and signed with them at the end of the decade. So I think that that's a huge deal for them is continuing to be a relevant team. Also, for whatever it's worth, the fact that the Celtics just won a finals and uh, uh, overpassed them for the most championships ever in a franchise history i'm sure they want to you know make sure the celtics don't entirely leave them in the dust to some degree so they're gonna be 
a team in the mix. And with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, there are going to be at least conversations about what different types of moves can the Lakers make to make them a finals contender. And my feelings on it, I've been clear about it. I think the ceiling is just about closed, or the window, I should say, is just about closed. Now, I I do not like going out and, like, saying those types of things and completely discounting the possibility of it, but I think it's an extremely tall task for the Lakers to find a way into a winning situation here, and given the fact of outside of those top two players, they really don't have much to offer. Austin Reeves is a good player. I saw a report earlier that they could potentially be interested in shopping him for a massive price, which basically in my eyes means that, you know, the the report exactly from The Athletic is that he's untouchable unless it's for a, quote, legit all-star for whatever that means. Um, I don't think that the Lakers are going to go after this third superstar type of approach. Now, that has been thrown out there a couple different times. Part of it is I'm not sure if there necessarily is another star like that that's going to be available. It's a shame. Just in general speaking here, I wish that DeMar DeRozan had that three-point shot a little bit more reliable. It's something that he's been working on for the for the majority of his career, but originally from California, I could totally see DeMar DeRozan in a Lakers jersey, and I want to see him on a meaningful ba- basketball team this upcoming year. I think that he can provide some winning basketball. I just don't really know what the fit is for him anywhere, but the Lakers conversation is interesting because he's going to be a free agent. Lakers are probably going to have enough money to go get him if they wanted to, but probably not going to be the case. And I don't think that there is, you know, another star out there that is going to be what the Lakers need. Now, maybe, I don't even know if financially it works for them to go after Paul George as well. I would imagine that if LeBron signs this three-year max extension, that it's going to significantly handicap them in terms of any other types of expensive moves they could make this summer. Probably better off going after some of you know, the cheaper players out there. I don't have the list of free agents um, open on my computer right now, but I just think that this is a situation with the Lakers where if they are just willing to accept that they're probably going to be a bottom-seeded team and it's going to take a little bit of a stars-aligning type playoff schedule for them to win it, you can be okay with that. But I don't see them topping any of the other best teams in the Western Conference. I think that the Timberwolves are going to continue to be better than them. The Nuggets are going to continue to be better than them. The Mavericks, we'll see, very much could be. The Thunder as well. You're going to have the Grizzlies coming back at some point, who um, you know, the Lakers beat in the postseason in 23, but I still think they're going to continue to get better as well. So all of these things put together, I don't think it's a very bright situation for the Lakers moving forward, and I'm sure that they're going to be, again, in that playoff conversation, but... I, I don't think that there's a solution on the table for them. So let me know what, what you think about the Lakers and their plans this offseason. But that is all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for tuning into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Um, be sure to check us out on social media as well for more exclusive short content. And we will be back tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern. We will see you then. Take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great, I don't wanna go